Welcome to our first official episode of the DMV Autocross Podcast. I'm Danny Kao. And I'm Atta Tabesh. Thanks for joining us on this ride. Uh, believe it or not, this is only our second episode, the first one being the pilot, and we are thrilled to see the podcast community growing. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Atta told me that we would be lucky to get 20 listeners for our pilot <laughs> episode. This means after he made all 10 of his kids to listen, there's only 10 people left that would listen. I don't have done kids, uh, but we do have over 300 listeners to the pilot episode. And I only thought uh, since only three people like you, um, that we only have a few few listeners. But uh, this is no less than a miracle, Danny. <laughs> and you are right, Ada. <laughs> We'd yeah. like to thank you for listening and we'll continue to bring accurate and useful contents for everybody. <laughs> now on with the podcast. Buckle up for this week and next week in DMV Autocross. Unfortunately, Mother Nature had other plans this Saturday. NASA Autocross has been canceled due to weather. The next NASA event will be held at Virginia Motor Sports Park Saturday, February 17th. Fingers crossed for the better weather. On the brighter side, most DMV Autocross groups have dropped their 2024 schedules. PCA Chesapeake, SCCA Washington DC region, NCC BMW CCA, all releasing their schedules. PCA Chesapeake events are available to register on motorsportsreg.com. WDCR is still finalizing their contracts, but the event dates are firm. BMW Club released their entire 2024 schedule, um, but the links are not available yet to register. As soon as these events are available on Motorsports Reg, we will update them and add them to the DMV Autocross Facebook page. Yay. All right. So uh, starting this episode, we'll introduce a new segment called Autocross Weather Forecast. In this segment, we'll be giving you weather forecasts for each event and provide a strategy on how to deal with the event. So put your hands together and welcome our resident astrologist, Alan Claffey. It's, it's meteorologist, Danny. <laughs> I don't I, Well, time out. So I don't know why Alan's not coming on. <laughs> I, I, inv I invited him, <laughs> but he's not coming on. Oh come on, Alan. You need to come on. Oh, there, there, oh, there he is. Is he here? <laughs> Where'd he go? I don't know. We'll hear a bleep. Uh, some, um, on the... Beep. <laughs> Alan. Uh, there. <laughs> well, that was off to a yeah, flying there. start. <laughs> I was looking at the script. I, just, I, didn't, I didn't see that it. All right. Well, that rookie we did it. That, that, <laughs> we did that, it. That, 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 that's okay because because I had no idea if it was gonna come on or not. I was like, Alan, just drop off. No forecast for you this week. <laughs> Whoops. Oh my god. Sorry. All right. No autocross. Okay, no so forecast. Here's our, here's our resident astrologist, Alan Claffey. <laughs> it's meteorologist, Danny. <laughs> You'll be some kind of ologist next week. <laughs> oh my. This constant stream of wrongologists. Yes. Are we recording? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> this all time will be in there, by the way. No, it's not. Uh, no, no it's please not. don't. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> all right. Go. All right. Cue me in. You're somebody. cued in. <laughs> Already cue you. I'm cued in. Cued in. <laughs> oh, this is great. All right. all right, guys. Well, thanks for having me. All right. Me. Let me do it again. <laughs> Okay, here's our resident oh astrologist, God. Alan Claffey. <laughs> meteorologist. A He's a meteorologist. <laughs> oh, the outtake's going to be better than the real No thing. outtakes. This is it. <laughs> oh, God, there's a dog here. Hi, buddy. Hi. Oh, this is, we've just completely gone off the rails. We were Hi, never buddy. on we're the rails, really man. Yeah. We were never on well, the rails. You know, this is what's wrong for me to try to write a script. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah. this guy stop go away go away he's just a puppy he doesn't know he anything. loves you that's it he just loves you he, yeah. he does that's all right here, here's our segment of the autocross weather forecast we'll see you next week alan <laughs> <laughs> see ya <laughs> it's in the weather. that was bad yeah. all right we'll do it again we'll do it again three two one please go Yeah. Who, me no. now? <laughs> You're the meteorologist. <laughs> well, I was waiting to be. All right. Okay, I'll, really I'll, I'll give you the intro again. I'll give you the intro again. 
I'm guys. fired, right? <laughs> three, two, one, did like three times. Yeah, but I'm, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Adam to say oh, he's okay. a meteorologist. Okay, right. okay. so you don't so. have to, but now I know what's going right. on. Okay, okay, do it again. All right, so we're we'll right. so please put your okay. hands together and welcome our resident astrologist, Alan Clapp. Meteorologist, he's a meteorologist. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, the good news is there's no autocross to go to this week because the high temperature at VMP is only supposed to be 33 degrees. There is no going fast when it's 33 degrees. I don't care what you got for tires or a car or anything. The only way you can go fast in those conditions if you take the car and run it up and down Route 1 about 10 times, laying on the brakes the whole time, getting it back in the grid, throwing the tire blankets on, and then finding five of your friends to co-drive the car and bribe the guy running the show that you all have to run in the same heat so you're all just hot lapping. That would make sense. But since there's no autocross to go to, you don't have to worry about that. So better luck next week. <laughs> well, thank you. Th this dog th is this dog is after you. <laughs> the dog is fighting me hard. Maybe you can use the dog as the blanket. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Okay, so now yes. on to events highlights and results segment. There's no autocross event this week, like Alan said since our last podcast, and we are doubly sad that a NASA autocross event has been canceled due to weather. So what to do when there's no autocross? Some tune to online racing, some stay at home and fix cars. You know, some go down and go down Rue 1, go 10 times, and there's still no autocross. Uh, and then some of us went to Summit Point, though, for the refrigerator boat event number four and five. And here's Ada with more. Ada. Refrigerator Bowl 4 and 5 were held at Summit Point last Saturday on the 13th on Maine. In case you don't know, Refrigerator Bowl is a track cross event which runs during the winter months. Refrigerator Bowl. Track cross is like Time Attack, uh, but runs with an auto, like an autocross, as in one car at a time, and it runs from point A to point B. The fastest time during the session wins. Autocrossers from the DMV and many Central PA autocrosser hot shoes attended this event, and we even met a person who came all the way from Columbus, Ohio, just for the day. So that morning was wet and cold. The first group ran in wet conditions, but amazingly, the fastest time came from that first group. Crazy Ivan Adamek, the autocross legend who drives his 40 PSI boosted Audi, won it by a landslide, followed by Norm Flowers in his beautiful 991.2 GT3 in second place. We witnessed Mr. Clever name Dean Mohit using his Clever trick, getting multiple runs by changing his number from 84 to 48, so the timing person could not apply his time to his name. This Clever, tr this clever trick gave him 16 runs, yeah. and we believe he's still running at this hour. <laughs> it has been confirmed he is still running uh, at this hour, yeah. And, and, and he was acting all innocent on top of it, man, I'm telling you. Yeah, like, he's so clever. Innocent. He's so clever. <laughs> the afternoon heat was dry and got colder as the day went on. Uh, once the wind picked up, um, my chance of FTD was over because I don't have a cheater, two-driver, all-wheel drive car like Carwin and Pollock. I'm not going to name any names, though. Uh, fastest time of the day went to Mr. Norm Flowers, followed by Abe uh, Rosengrant and his GT4. Third went to Mr. Rick Newman and his Porsche Spider. The combined age of the top three is almost 200 years, which has got to be some kind of a cool record. Congrats to Norm for the FTD. Yep, congratulations to Norm again. Uh, I've been trying to get Norm to adopt me for the last two years so I can have his GT3. So far, it hasn't worked, but I'll keep trying. And on that note, this concludes our event and highlight of the week. All right, time for our Feature of the Week segment where we tackle interesting, informative, or just plain fun topics. Today is all about surviving winter without autocross. Over to someone who's weathered nearly 60 autocrossless winters, autocross less winters. Danny. <laughs> uh, I actually, I, I've autocrossed many, many winters, actually. <laughs> you know, winter events were norm around here, you know, when I started autocrossing until someone in a snow cross at Ripken, you know, hit a porta potty <laughs> with someone in there. And that, that someone in there actually won a national championship. So I might try to repeat that. So, Alan and uh, Ada, what do you do during the winter autocross month? Alan? Well, one, 
one thing we tried some years ago I had a group of friends and we decided we were all going to go to Autobahn and do indoor karting once a month during the off season. We did it once and it was a great time. We were relatively under control. I don't think anybody got hurt, but for some reason, either they stopped doing it or they hated me so much they didn't invite me back. So uh, it's a good idea, but it kind of fizzled. Huh. So that that was interesting because, because you know, I never thought about that, but, uh, but back at about 10, 15 years ago, a group of us in DC that does a lot of autocrossing actually go to Allsport in Delaware. And then we have, we do winter auto, we would do winter karting enduros, right? So uh, Brian Garfield was the person that organized all that. And then we have Julian and just about everybody in DC running autocrosses at the time, you know, back in 2008, nine, 10 have done it. And then we did that for many years until, uh, until Brian got too old that he can't run anymore. <laughs> 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 and Anna, what were your tricks? That's awesome. So I I like the whole building over the winter series. Um, I built my S two thousand over a couple of winters, and um, I just I just enjoy uh, the wrenching time uh, during the winter. But lately, I've been going to refrigerator bowls because I don't have too much to wrench on. So I do enjoy the once a month going out there in the freezing cold, uh, sitting in the classroom, which is nice and indoors at Summit, you know. And, uh, and just getting a little bit of track time, a little bit of seat time over the winter. I think it helps me out a lot. Um, but I do like the building over the winter. I, do, I think that that's a lot of fun as well. No, that's great. So I actually, I can share a couple of things. I, I really do them because uh, um, winter time are time to try to gather advantages before the spring comes. So your car is, mm -hmm. will be doing your best. Or the racing season actually never ends for me. Right. So as far yeah. as far as improving for the next season, what I typically do is I will set up I will set up projects. And then as soon as Thanksgiving time come around, I have the next four months building the card I want to build. So I have done things like adding superchargers. And let's say there are 72 steps for the supercharger building the supercharger. I would do a step a day. So in 72 days, it's complete, <laughs> right? And then uh, when, we, yeah. when we bought Oscar, the, the, the CSP Miata MB uh, with Klein and myself, I built mm -hmm. that car in 70 days. So er wow. every day after work, I would go to Klein's house and we'll put something together. And we start off with the empty chassis and 70 days later, it was done, right? So, so awesome. there's always some kind of a year end, I mean, the year ending project that I end up doing. And then so next year I bring out something new. So um, that that usually brings a lot of fun and all that stuff, you know, while the car is getting built. But but it also gives you a lot of hope and anticipation on what you know what's happening in the New York season, right? Yep. The second thing I do, which is a big trick, I don't really want to tell people about this, but that's this is what I do, right? Yeah. Winter season race is what I focus on the most. Is the reason for that is because all the autocross addicts, right? The super fast ones, they will show up because they got nothing else to do. And they will come in and wear, bring their snow tires and, you know, like he, he soaked tires or running whatever the gas or whatever they're running. And, 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 and you guys know who you are, you know, the Peachy Brothers and Strano, right? So what <laughs> I do is I bring the fastest car, the freshest AO52 possible and tire blankets and get my car into the best condition. Right, because that's my national mm -hmm. championship. That's the only time I have a chance to win something. <laughs> so, so while they're there thinking that they're just going to go grab some food afterwards, I'm there to win. <laughs> but you're not kidding. You're not just joking. I'm not, you're being serious. I'm not kidding because I know come. Yeah, you're being serious. Yeah, because right I know now. come springtime, it's yeah. all over for me. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> so that's my only chance. So, uh, so, uh, so, so that that that's what I do. So, so for everybody yeah. who's listening here, right. Um, you can make your national championship into any event. So just pick an event and say, that's my national championship and see if we can go win that. I think, I think that's probably a yep. pretty good advice to keep everything fun. That's really great advice. Yeah. Love it. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, so go ahead, Ada, please. I was going to say meeting a new autocross friend. All right. Yeah. So who's the new friend? Well, <clears throat> our new autocross friend, I'm very happy to introduce our own Alan Claffey to everyone as our new autocross friend. Alan is a fantastic friend who uh, will meet you anywhere 
from autocrosses to cars and coffees to steak and shakes. He is literally <laughs> always there. Um, so welcome, Alan, and thank you for being our autocross friend. Well, thanks, Ed. Uh, I'm glad to think I'm considered a friend of you guys. <laughs> I'd like to consider you guys friends of mine, so the field is mutual. That's kind of unfortunate for Alan, is it? Yeah. That's really sad, actually, yeah. Alan. Yeah, you should find some better <laughs> yeah, friends. You should, friends. Yeah. You should yeah. aim higher. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> so we have a couple of uh, questions for you to get everyone to know you a little bit better. Uh, people will see you at autocrosses. They are welcome to run up to you and just absolutely ask you anything, and, and, and you always have a nice answer. Hugs. Lots, Lots of, of hugs. hugs as well. Uh, so we're going to ask you a few very hard questions now, and we'd like you to try your best to answer them. Okay. So, Alan, you've owned a couple of Miatas, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what uh, what a makes a Miata stand out as an exceptional vehicle? Because you've gone back to them over and over and over. Um, so. Well, the most important thing, especially to a mm -hmm. person like me, is that they're mm -hmm. cheap. Because of people who don't like spending money gravitate towards Miatas. They're kind of the cheat code of autocross. They don't weigh anything. They're very responsive. They're very tunable. Mm -hmm. Parts are cheap. They're easy to work on. They don't mm -hmm. break. They're just there's nature's most perfect autocross nature's. car. <laughs> how how many it. Miatas do you it. have, Alan? At the moment, there are five littering the driveway out there. At the moment, you have five Miatas. That's at the moment, there are five. That's probably too, too many. We're really good at buying cars. We're pretty bad at selling them. So oh, they just kind of hang around. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, second question, question number two. Good luck with this one. I heard your dad <laughs> is a racing legend. Oh, wow. Well. How come you don't look anything like Paul Newman? And how did you even get into cars then? <laughs> That's the second question, all of that together. Yeah, well, it was... It was uh, my dad who did it, and I'm going to apologize. These dogs are not cooperating with me. Yeah, but my dad was a, he did it all. He was an autocrosser, a club racer, ice racer. He basically did it all, you know, while raising four Amazing. kids. He was a, he had, you know, his, his big thing was he had a couple trying spitfires he did club racing with in the 60s and wow. 70s. Just at a local level. He never aspired to go to nationals or anything like that. And I just kind of followed along in his footsteps. That's fantastic. I love it. I love it. Um, next question. The second rumor I heard is that you actually worked for NASCAR. And the people, all of the viewers, want to know, is that true? And uh, they want to know, did you meet the love of your life while sneaking around the pits? Like, how? Did, like <laughs> explain a little bit of that. All right. So I worked. And, and work is a very, very generous description of what I did. I was in NASCAR. I was okay. uh, I, I was a media member who covered one of the, the minor league touring series up in New England. So I was I started a website back in the early days of the internet, you know, the 1996 Ooh. I think I started. And I just started going to the races and taking pictures and talking to the drivers and, and it turned into a, a fairly big deal before NASCAR itself got into the website wow. business. So, oh God, these dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And then the, the second part of that question was about the love of your life. Like there's rumors that you met someone at a at an event maybe? Well, no, I, so I, I met Kate and uh, we have been talking online and we decided to meet in person oh. at a NASCAR event in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, a track that doesn't even exist anymore. So y you met and, at your first meeting was at a race. Oh yes, man. Yes, and I tried to show her how good I was and I had all this inside mm -hmm, access. Yeah. So of course I said, Hey guys, watch this. I go up to the pit window and I'm gonna go pick up my media uh -huh. credential. Except the guy I was writing for never submitted nice. it. So they they said we don't have a record of you on here and I was left holding the bag. And she she kept talking wow. to me after that. So she doesn't care about first impressions then. That's wonderful. Good news. That's well, great. she's obviously infinite patience. Infinite patience. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Last question for you. And this, this okay. we saved the, the hardest for last, okay? This is it. All right. Why do you have so many cars 
and not a single one with an outrageously large wing. Most of your faster and better looking friends like myself and Danny, Carwin, Mike Brown, we all have very large wings. Do you have any comments on that dire and depressing no wing situation right now? I have a comment. I have a comment. Oh. Hmm. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, Danny yes, first, please. Uh, please. Yeah. Car- please Danny, Danny first. help bail yeah, me out. Bail him out. Car- Carwin's not better looking. That's all I have to say. Okay, that's the only comment you have. He's got a very large wing. Have you seen that wing? The end plates are huge. Oh man, he's he's compensating for his looks. I have not seen Carwin's wing, so I can't, I can't speak. Have you to seen that. Mike Brown though? Remember when his hair was long and he used to tie it back? That was crazy. He looked so good. Yeah, that takes me yeah. back. Take me back to my college yeah. days. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wings. See, I don't know if I'm fast enough that a wing's actually going to help not, me. That's not. But that. I'd like to find out. Okay. Someday. Okay. So you want to find out? So there's a wing. Are you saying that there's a something cooking? Huh? I'm not going to say oh. anything. Oh. oh, the people want to know, and you're going to hold them in suspense until the spring. It, well. Nothing's shown up at my Nothing's house Nothing's shown yet, up so. at his house. So that means that something can show up at your house. Added a wi- soon. Added a winner might be too cold to show the wing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, not again. Oh, no. <laughs> I, what did I sign up for? Being a weatherman? <laughs> who's, who's You're supposed to be our meteorologist. <laughs> <laughs> Astrologist. No. Astrologist. <laughs> That's not what that is. <laughs> Can you guys hear these dogs? Um, barely. Cause, yeah. Oh my god! Bad. Oh, I got I got three okay. kids. The That's dogs good. don't bother me at all. Yeah, a- Alan, just no worries. All I right. mean, you know, so this particular thing, not only we can uh, stray your eyeballs out, it can also eliminate all the animal noise. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good because these two don't. <laughs> They don't get this mouthy any no. other time. <laughs> that's okay. That's because you're a celebrity now on camera. <laughs> Yes. I think they, they want my job. They want right. to be on That's the right. show. So we'll, we'll, we'll make him the meteorologist next time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Sold. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you to our new autocross friend, Alan. All right. This concludes the podcast episode. Yes. Everybody's excuse, Yay. except the novices. You know, our novice meeting begins now. And novices, please stay. Yeah, please stay. And this week's novice meeting subject will be what to bring to an autocross? Yep. Ada, you want, you um, want to start with this? Yeah, I, I do. And I, and I want to, I want to like emphasize this because it really does matter. It's sunblock and chapstick. I know it sounds so corny, but actually sunblock helps you stay energized later in the day when you leave and the next day. You don't feel absolutely worn. So it's not always about the... Um, the, the the what's it called when the sun burns your skin sunburn it's not always about that it's also about like the energy levels and i'm telling you guys sunblock keep you keep your energy lips chapstick lips chap no one wants that on monday morning you know it just doesn't feel good so those are my two huge um huge ones but did you want to talk about like the generic regular stuff you you bring to an autocross yeah, I mean, I think that I think what we should probably talk about is is we can set we can you know put them in different categories, right? We can talk about the people, the things that you need to bring for yourself, mm-hmm. and the things that you need to bring for your car, and the things that mm-hmm. you need to bring sure. for the event, right? Okay. So so chopsticks is good, some blocks is good, mm-hmm. and in, in in addition for yourself, clothing, right? Mm-hmm. They always say that when you go to autocrosses, yes, please yeah. bring clothes. Yeah, don't, that's right. Please be dressed. You know, so you have to wear more clothes. No, let me just take that back. I, I don't want to go down that route again. <laughs> but not again. Not again. But um, you, you know, the, there's an old saying that though. you always dress for all seasons, right? Yeah. So you want to be prepared for rain, for sun, for cold, for wind, for earthquake, <laughs> tsunami, whatever. So so bring everything you can. Yeah to deal with all the conditions and weathers and so forth. That would be uh, my first ad. Alan? All right. So I am notorious for not packing light when I go to an event, even if it's just the the D.C. region down the street from here. Um, so I always bring – I got my tote right here. It's got all my cameras in it. It's got my tire pressure gauge. It's got a notepad in case I want to make notes. 
Um, the Solo Storm tablet, the GPS puck for it. Uh, I usually have a pretty good sized toolbox I bring with me just in case, even if I don't need it, there's a good chance someone else might need something. And it's nice to be the hero once in a while. Uh, and the other thing is I always have a cooler and it's full of water, ice, a couple energy drinks, some Gatorade, just anything you can you can bring to make your life a little easier. And if someone else happens to be in need, that doesn't hurt to, to be able to help out there as well. Love it. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that's it. one thing that I want to second to Alan, what Alan's saying. You know, I, I'm notoriously not for drinking enough. But when you get on autocross days, doesn't matter if it's, you know, hot, cold and all that stuff, you will need to drink a lot of water. You don't forget you're there for the entire day, right? So yeah. So here is the here is the the recommended daily water intake. That's the size of it. So you need to bring at least this much water. You know, actually that's pop, that's probably two of the that's Canada dries at um that uh, um at, at is drinking. So bring in at least one of these in, in volume anyway. And I would say another thing that's important to bring, if you don't bring anything else, right? Bring a trash yeah. bag. Bring, bring a big trash bag, right? <clears throat> if, you have, yeah. if you have one of those totes right. and stuff like that, that's good because you can put everything in there and cover it and then you don't have to worry about weather, right? But yep. you can, when you get out there, it could start raining, it could be anything. If you take your jacket out or have anything, you know, whatever that you have, if, when you run in a car, you have to empty the entire thing out of your car. Right, you cannot whole car. Yeah, yep. your whole car needs to be emptied out. Right, <clears throat> so everything that's emptied out, I would recommend putting everything into at the minimum a trash bag, so that when it gets yep. wet, nothing gets wet. Okay. All right. Oh, so uh, packing up after a, after a, yeah, a rainy day. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's nasty. It's the worst. Or what you could do is you just take the trash bag and just throw the whole thing out, then you don't have to bring anything home. Right? Toss it out. That's one way to do it. Don't litter though. That's right. <laughs> Toss it in a yeah, trash can. That's one way to do it. So uh, <laughs> as far as bringing things for the car, do you guys bring anything else other than camera equipment or, or obviously? A a Alan helmet? said tire pressure. <clears throat> I also bring a pump. I have a little portable air pump that I bring. So air down, air up, I can do it all. And I think that it's important because I usually end up bar letting someone borrow it too. So like Alan mentioned earlier about, you know, being the, the hero, it feels good, right? I also have painter's tape. Not because my car needs it, because someone will inevitably ask me for painter's tape. So I always bring painter's tape knowing that I have vinyl stickers on my car. <laughs> it just works. That's right. And so uh, then follow what, um, you know, Ad is saying, right? So uh, painter's tape, and then the, now, now we'll start talking about things that you need for the race. I think one of the few things you have to remember, definitely bring your driver's license. If you belong to a certain organization, um, if they happen to check your organization uh, card, right, on some of the SCCA national events or whatever, they will check it. I know most of the other groups don't, yeah. but, but just bring your membership card with you just in case. Bring some cash just in case you need it, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then um, on top of that, um, there's certain organization that will require you to pre-tech your car and turn in a tech sheet, right? For most of the autocross group, that we, don't, we actually don't do that, but there may be some that will start doing something like that. So if there's any kind of a requirement yeah. that you have to read through to bring, like a, a piece of paper or something that has to be pre-signed or whatever, by all means, please do it. I know mm -hmm. minor waivers is one of them. For sure. So, so any so read your you know event subs and then make sure that anything that's required, make sure you bring those. Actually, a lot of organizations are doing the speed yeah. waiver. Mm -hmm. Helps to have that done in advance, so when you roll up to the gate, you can just show it right there when you get there. Don't yeah. Even most have organizations have speed waivers now too, as well. So, so make sure you do that. So, Ada, what do you think? Anything else that uh, that we need to bring? I think the most important thing is bringing yourself and just showing up. And if you want, bring a friend. It's way more fun uh, with another friend, any friend, you know, and, and just being there is is victory. Yep. All right. Awesome. And then uh, with that note, thank you for joining us for this novice meeting. In our next podcast episode, we'll talk about what to do once you get on site at an autocross. Please join us to find out more. And that wraps up our second episode of the DMV Autocross Podcast. 
Thanks for spending the last half an hour with us. We again hope you found this information informative and fun. And don't forget to join us for the next episode. Until then, keep those tires on the track and keep those wings in the back. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. That was good.